As a 90s kid, I grew up watching the 90s live action Batman films, and this included perhaps the worst comic book movie ever made, Batman and Robin. It not only destroyed the franchise, but made no one touch the character in live action for 8 years. It was so bad that George Clooney who played Batman and Joel Schumacher, the director of the film, both apologized for the movie. If I, if I disappointed them in any way, then I really want to apologize, because it wasn't my intention. I apologize to the crowd at Comic Con for Batman and Robin. I always apologize for Batman. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty freaking bad. I tried to rewatch it a few summers ago with my friends, but I fell asleep not long after starting it, which isn't the best sign. However, I decided it was time to go back and look at this movie and watch it all the way through. And I knew that the only way I could do that was if I was making a video on it. So, here we are. Now, I don't want to be that guy that begs for likes, but my YouTube consultant told me that I need more likes and comments on my videos to keep the channel growing. So it would mean a lot to me if you could do either of those or both. That would be really awesome. And if you liked the video and want to stick around, hit that subscribe button as well. Very nice. Before we get into it though, I want to thank today's sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, who not only has a great name, but is also America's largest injury law firm. They have over 800 attorneys operating in 49 different states. Morgan & Morgan is not a traditional law firm though. They are a consumer facing brand with a promise of being for the people. In 2020, there were over 5 million car crashes. That's more than 15,000 a day and 600 an hour. Almost everybody drives, and if you're one of those 5 million people that get into a car accident, or any other kind of accident, you may be entitled to more than you think. If you're injured and don't know where to go, Morgan & Morgan makes it so easy. You can literally submit a claim without ever leaving your couch. In 8 clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan, meaning there's no need to visit a law office, sit through timely consultations, or even go in to sign documents. You can do all of this from your phone so quick and so easy. You can check out the link below for Morgan & Morgan and make sure that you're represented if you ever get into an accident. Now that I've said that, let's get the video started. This movie starts off with a shot of superhero nipples, ass, and crotch. We're off to a great start. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. This dialogue right here pretty much establishes how the dialogue in this film is written and surprisingly is pretty tame compared to what's to come. So George Clooney took on the mantle of Batman following Val Kilmer and this film's predecessor, and it was an odd choice to say the least. I don't really think he's a great Batman. He's frozen the antiquities wing. He's turned the security guards into blocks of ice. He's calling himself Mr. Freeze. <laughs> this honestly sounds like the intro to a Universal ride. So Mr. Freeze is the first major villain we're introduced to. And yes, I said the first. There are way too many villains in this movie, but we'll get to that later. We have another odd casting choice as Arnold Schwarzenegger plays Mr. Freeze. And as odd as that casting was, that's not even the oddest part about his character. That prize goes to his dialogue. The Iceman cometh. I'm not kidding when I say every line he has is a pun about ice. I kept a tally while watching and I counted 36 different ice puns. That's outrageous. <laughs> so Batman enters the scene by sliding down a dinosaur statue and then flies across the museum so clearly wearing a harness. Robin then enters and somehow makes his symbol in the hole he busted through like he's a freaking Looney Tune. I have no idea how that worked, but okay. I don't think the filmmakers know the laws of physics. He just kept going up and up and up. Things then get even more ridiculous as Batman and Robin start playing hockey with Freeze's goons using the diamond that Freeze is after as the puck. You really can't make this stuff up. <laughs> What is he doing with his legs? What? That's all that happened? He was shooting him for like 10 seconds. Earlier it took one second to cover the entire body of the cop. Can you feel it coming? The ice cold of space. 
So Freeze's plan is to let the ship they're on go so high in space that Batman freezes. But he literally has a freeze gun in his hand. Why can't he just fully freeze him now? The ship starts to freeze on the inside, but Robin is on the outside of the ship where it should be much colder, but he's totally unaffected. Please make that make sense. <laughs> Again, I really don't think these filmmakers know the laws of physics. That board would have been gone. Sort of like when you were a kid and you tried to put one of those floaty boards under your feet in the pool. That thing wants to shoot up the same way this surfboard door should have done. So Robin then surfs down a roof sounding like a freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Calabunga! And after falling like 50,000 feet, they all somehow land in a 4 foot wide furnace and survive the landing. Freeze had used his freeze blaster in the furnace, but for some reason, the whole building is frozen and it's snowing. I thought you needed water to make it snow, so I don't really know how that works, especially because the furnace was very concealed and they left through a very thick metal door. Robin, no! Oof, you just had to be the hero, Robin. What will you do? Chase the villain? Or save the boy? <laughs> Your emotions make you weak. That's why this day's mine. <laughs> why didn't Batman just grab it while he was talking? I know that this movie isn't the first one to fall to this cliche of bad guys talking too much, but come on, it was right there, Batman. Do we get him? No, we didn't get him. You got your ass frozen, Robin. We're then introduced to the second villain of the movie, Poison Ivy. To make the dendronium orchid and the South American rattlesnake have failed again. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Not long after that, we're introduced to the third villain of the movie, Bane, who they did dirty, making the one person that not only broke the bat, but also figured out a secret identity a one dimensional idiot who did whatever he was told. <laughs> and he was created by. Wait, hold up. Is that Lionel Luther? I can respect your opinion. Sadly, I'm not good at rejection. I'm afraid you'll have to die. <laughs> did, did he just kill her because she called him a psycho? Talk about an overreaction. She of course doesn't die though, and when she returns, she has a British accent for some reason. I think I've had a change of heart. And Lionel Luther falls to his knees from horniness. You look great. Only to be killed. I'm poison. So my question is, how did she know she was poison? She just came out of the ground 10 seconds before this. I feel like most people wouldn't even know why they're alive, much less know the powers that they now possess. So Bane mindlessly follows Ivy because I guess he's 22, especially with all those steroids being pumped into him. Freeze needs extreme cold to survive. His cryo suit uses diamond enhanced lasers to keep him at zero degrees. He couldn't have picked something cheaper and more attainable than freaking diamonds? He picked like the most expensive thing on earth. I come on, sing! Louder, come on, sing, sing, sing! So we saw all of these thugs wearing winter hats and multiple layers freezing their butts off. But this woman is just somehow fine in the same room while being half naked. Frosty! Uh, yeah, boss. <laughs> there is no way the head of Frieza's minions is named Frosty. We need quality time. Hold up. Did he hide his wife behind a box of frozen sesame chicken? Why does he even have all of this food and ice cream? Does he have a grocery store side hustle? I guess you need a side hustle when you pick freaking diamonds as the power source for your suit. They ain't cheap. Please be looking for me. Alright dick, keep your dick in your pants. Uncle Alfred's been supporting me ever since. You have. So, secret sounds? Wait, did dick even say that? Oh, secret sounds? They literally showed us his whole face and still decided it would be a good idea to put his line in there. It looks like Chris O'Donnell just forgot to do his job, too busy watching everyone else act, because this scene is done in one shot. Yikes. <laughs> Secrets are a virtual prerequisite in this house. 
Don't you think so? Yep, you've got it, Alfred. We're good. Please don't tell our secret. Which Alfred actually ends up doing later in the movie anyway, but we'll talk about that later. What is it? It's beautiful. You can say that again. All right, Dick. Settle down, dude. You came to talk me in. That's right a switch. Yes. Uh, is it just me? Or is it weird that she's stroking Alfred's hair like that? Yes. Ew. We then find out that Barbara isn't as goody two-shoes we thought she was as she sneaks out. Pretty sure you could have just walked out one of the 20 doors this mansion has, but this works too, I guess. Satellites already in orbit allow us to reflect light from any given point around the planet. This dude is just happy to be here. Uh, miss, you need to stop. Out of my way, you fascist bulldog. Damn, what did he do to you? A day of reckoning is coming. That's right. And there will be no one to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is having the time of his life being in this movie. Also, the fact that everyone just laughs in her face is pretty freaking savage. Big Freeze will take the bait. He'll be here. So Batman and Robin hold an auction for this huge diamond paid for by Bruce Wayne, basically setting a trap for Freeze to come out. But Ivy shows up first dressed in a gorilla outfit. <laughs> Also, let's talk about this insane party. You have Tarzan and George of the Jungle swinging on vines above the crowd, the mouth of a gorilla, I think. And honestly, this party looks kinda lit. Why did she walk on these men like that? What was the purpose? It's not like the floor was dirty or anything. On the other hand, youth does have its advantages. Endurance, stamina, my garden needs tending. Uh, I don't think she's talking about fighting anymore. So Ivy takes the necklace without anyone noticing and then just casually offers herself up as a hooker. I'll include an evening of my company for the winner. I'll bring everything you see here plus everything you don't. And Batman and Robin start bidding on her. Six million. Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. Could you even swipe a credit card for $7 million? Wouldn't you need a cashier's check or something? Mr. Freeze then comes in with another ice joke. All right, everyone, chill. Ugh. The fight choreography for this scene and honestly for the entire movie is laughable. Good night. Like, it's so bad. Yeah. I'm, I'm fully convinced now these filmmakers do not know the laws of physics because what the hell was that? Cool party. Oh my god. So Freeze escapes with a giant diamond and we see a high speed car chase through Gotham that's absolutely terrible. Like what is this? Batman stops Robin's engine because he doesn't think he can make it and almost kills him in the process. It honestly probably would have been safer to just let him jump. Jeez, tell me how you really feel. Uh-oh. What? Why is he so stiff? He looks like he just stuck a landing in the Olympics. It's your house, it's your rules, I mean, it's your way or the highway. Yeah, bitch. Because I'm Batman. Yeah. Bro, aren't you Robin? You were trained by freaking Batman. How did you let this happen? Also, that he ya kills me. Yeah. Why are there green lightning flashes? This is a constant in the scene, even when they bring Mr. Freeze in like he's freaking Hannibal Lecter. Allow me to break the ice. Ugh, I don't know how many more of these ice puns I can take. I really don't. Also, how tall are these cops? They make a 6'2 Arnold look tiny. Maybe it's just perspective, I don't know. Ah. This has to be the most 90s thing I've ever seen, and I kind of love it. <laughs> what is this floor? What is this line delivery? I've got to say, Uma Thurman gave Ivy a very interesting voice, and it is not good. We've got work to do. Bane! Dear! Even her monologue, which was literally her just talking to herself, which makes it even more corny, just sounds so weird. Animal protectors of the status quo. 
So Bruce's girlfriend, Julie Madison, gives him an ultimatum saying she wants to get married. And Bruce is not about that idea. I know you've had your wild nights. Wild doesn't quite cover it. <laughs> Boy, I'll say. <laughs> Bruce then calls Julie the wrong name after kissing her. Who's Ivy? Mm. What? You just called me Ivy. Yikes. So Dick follows Barbara to Gotham, and Gotham is one weird place in this movie. It has an overall 90s look, but is also futuristic at the same time. It has dudes with old time wigs and eye patches, guys with old time hats and suspenders but with a blonde bob wig, it has your typical biker dudes, people with pink rock and roll hair, and freaking Coolio, which is super random. So Barbara enters this motorcycle race, which Dick joins as well without her knowing, and the people they're racing against cheat, putting green fire in their path. Why is everything in this movie green? We have green lightning, green fire, green lights everywhere. Didn't we get enough green from the Riddler's appearance in the last movie? As it turns out, Alfred is sick with the same thing that Freeze's wife had, and the only person capable of fixing it is Mr. Freeze himself. Okay, say what you will about this movie, but this shot is actually pretty spectacular cinematography, especially with how Arnold moved the sculpture as the camera moved to always make sure his whole face was in view. They also show a cop chilling in the criminal property locker, and I'm not really sure why he needs to be there, but you can see the Riddler in Two-Face's costumes from the last movie, which might have been a cool easter egg if this movie was any good. Bane then yeets this dude through the wall and steals Freeze's suit back. <sighs> Oh yeah, let's just lightly jump on this guy and then fall to the ground when he taps us. Honestly though, I'd do the same thing. If I saw a mindless, jacked up, steroid filled monster, they could not pay me enough to actually try and stop him while he's running at full speed. His name is Bane. A laundry service that delivers. It would have been really cool to see Mr. Freeze, Bane, and Poison Ivy all in the same room, but the movie was so bad it doesn't even matter. Also, why are these guards trying to cut through the door? They didn't do anything to keep it shut, they just walked in, and there's no way it can lock from the inside given that it's a jail cell, so shouldn't they just be able to open it? You and me love, retrieve my wife. You never said anything about a wife! Uh, oh, so she has a thing for Mr. Freeze? Where did that come from? Yeah, there's no way in hell they would actually survive this jump. Freeze has escaped. Bro, this is Freeze's hideout? You've gotta be kidding me. That is absolutely hilarious. So Batman and Robin have a casual conversation and somehow Batman just finds this hidden room behind the frozen sesame chicken because, you know, he's the world's greatest detective. Meanwhile, the bad guys are in the floor underneath them, which you would think the world's greatest detective would know, but I guess not. <laughs> You're telling me that an entire police force and their captain fell to the ground because they blasted some cold air into the room. That is laughable. I don't know what's worse, this or Gordon getting the entire police force trapped underground while Bane starts a manhunt on the city and the Dark Knight Rises. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Tell me which one's worse. While the police force was being as overdramatic as LeBron getting poked in the eye. And James goes down, holding his head. And just, can we play ball? This is a great game. Freeze got the diamonds he needed and escaped. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin fight over Ivy, and Bruce flips Dick into a giant thing of ice cream. Thank God it wasn't acid, though, because we all know how that turned out. What happened? How'd they get away? I mean, it didn't help that you and your cops fell to the floor when the room got a little cold. I've never been good with competition. Oh, so she's psycho psycho. I'm sorry. Those are the most 90s glasses, and I'm definitely here for it. Kill them, of course. But why stop there? Why should only Batman and Robin die while the society that created them goes unpunished? Yes. It's pretty crazy how Ivy just manipulates the other villains, especially Mr. Freeze, who's actually a genius scientist. Like, it just seems too easy for Ivy. For we will be the only two people left in the world. Adam and Evil. Okay, one, terrible pun. And two, 
What about Bane? They say this when he's standing right next to them. So while Alfred is dying, he asks Barbara for one last favor. Find my brother, Wilfred, your uncle, wherever he is, and give him this. Never open it. Oh, well now she's definitely gonna open it, Alfred. Access allowed. That is not how a reflection from a computer screen works, but okay. Really, how are you? Wait, didn't they break up? Are you telling me that Bruce told her he was never marrying her, called her a different girl's name after kissing her, and she still stayed with him? I guess money talks. Where do you think you're going? It's not a bat light, it's a Robin signal. So one thing weird is, they call this the Robin signal, and they have this on his costume too, but that's not the Robin signal. It's the Nightwing symbol, who Dick would eventually become when he left Batman in the comics. With all of their fighting in this movie, I thought he was going to leave to become Nightwing, and then Barbara would take his place as Bruce's partner as Batgirl. But no, he just goes back to being Robin in the end, still with the Nightwing logo. She wants to kill you, Dick. Oh. I thought... It's his name. It's his name. Who is this nutball? He waited his whole acting career for this one line, and he absolutely nailed it. I expect you might find your way down here, child. As such, I programmed my brain algorithms into the bad computer and created a virtual simu simulation. Wait, what? How? And took the liberty to create something in your size. Also, how did he know she was going to go down there, and how did he know she would need a suit? She showed up unexpectedly and had only been there for a few days, all of which Alfred was sick for. When did he have time to do these incredibly complicated tasks? <laughs> At this point, I can't even say I'm surprised. I almost saw it coming before it even happened. But I still cannot believe they added these shots and made them so freaking dramatic for literally no reason. So Dick goes to see Ivy after she put the Robin logo that isn't really the Robin logo into the sky, and we see the most extra villain reveal in movie history, and their face to face is anything but good. Kiss me and I'll tell you. Tell me and I'll kiss you. <laughs> Can we get new writers in here? So Ivy finally kisses Robin with her poisonous lips, but plot twist, he's wearing rubber lips. Rubber lips are immune to your charms. See, right here, you could have just kissed him and killed him right on the spot. Instead, Robin gets pushed into the water like a little bitch, and Batman shows up. You're not the only one who can set a trap, Venus. <laughs> what the f is she doing? Batman gets taken down too, though, and in comes Batgirl, because, you know, late 90s girl power. <laughs> what? Bro, there's no way they actually did that. They had him come up and then reverse the shot to make it look like he went back down. Like, wow. It looks terrible. And it's so obvious with the way the water moves. Curses. There's no way that's how Ivy got defeated. After they built her up all movie as the number one bad guy. That's how she ends? Also, don't the plants obey her? Wasn't that plant closed like that when Dick walked in and it opened at her command? Also, for Ivy's entire standoff with both Batman and Batgirl, which lasted for four minutes of the movie, it took Dick that long to get out of the water, and it looked pretty easy as he just walked right on out like it was nothing. I guess that's what the filmmakers thought too, and is why they added this forward and reverse shot of him, but it honestly would have been better to just keep that out. It wouldn't have been good, but it would be better than this. Bruce, it's me, Barbara. I found the Batcave. She knows who we are. Guess we'll just have to kill her. Yep. This big moment, the reveal of Batgirl to Batman and Robin, might have the stiffest acting in the whole film, and that's saying something. So Mr. Freeze's plan of freezing over Gotham is still in play, and he uses the telescope that Bruce gave to the city. Let's kick some ice. I, I can't. I can't. One thing weird is, why all of a sudden does Freeze have these glowing blue teeth? Where was that the rest of the film? So Team Batman comes in with new costumes that Alfred made, and I don't know, they're honestly not even that cool. Maybe he melted. Wait. Did she just take off one mask, only to have another one underneath it? What was even the point? I got you! No, I got you. 
Oh. It's one of those days! Hey, he's back with another Oscar-worthy line. He honestly might be my favorite part of this film. Batman ends up beating Freeze, Robin and Batgirl beat Bane, and they have to unfreeze Gotham. You're pretty good at this, little girl. Well, watch and learn, little boy. Is it just me, or is it weird that this couple that's been flirting all movie called each other little boy and little girl? And you two motherfuckers need Jesus. They end up unfreezing Gotham just in time, and the day is saved. I'm taking you back to Arkham Asylum. How the hell is this dude still alive? He couldn't even last two seconds without being in the cold earlier in the movie. So how did he last like 10 minutes and probably like an hour by the time they get him back to Arkham? But anyway, Batman shows him a video of Ivy admitting that she killed his wife. As I told Lady Freeze when I pulled her plug. But Batman says that they saved her, and he asks how to fix both her and Alfred. Will you help me? Take two of these. Are you telling me that the cure was in his suit this whole time? Why didn't he just use it on his wife earlier? Surprise. I am your new cellmate, and I've come to make your life a living hell. So, because he helped Batman, they just let him have free range in the cell with Ivy to either torture or kill her? That seems incredibly irresponsible, but okay. Jeez, they are freaking slobs without Alfred around. Are you rather disappointed at how poorly I have taught you proper housekeeping? Thank God he's back, because someone has to clean this mess up. Imagine how bad this mansion would have gotten if it was just Bruce without Alfred there. It would be a wreck. Nice. I can't wait for the sequel where they'll all be back. Oh yeah, that's right. This movie sucked. There is no sequel. In all seriousness though, this movie has a lot of nostalgia for me, because it's what made me fall in love with Batman. This film and its predecessor Batman Forever. Had it not been for these movies, I might not have read some of my favorite stories of all time in the comics. Batman is my favorite superhero of all time, and I owe a great deal to this movie, even if it is hot garbage. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.